doctors welcome to my channel ITJ Olympiads and AP Physics with Ambarish and today I have brought a very interesting problem for all of you in fact this problem was asked in one of our uh, uh, test series uh, papers uh, VAT papers to be precise uh, two years ago and students found this uh, a bit difficult they found uh, uh, it very confusing in the exam and that's why I decided to take up this problem so without much ado let me straight away get into the problem so here we go so here's the problem so let me read out the problem for all of you during a number of complete cycles a reversible engine shown by a circle this one absorbs 1200 joule from reservoir at 400 kelvin so it's absorbing 1200 joule here okay uh, and performs uh, 200 joule of mechanical work and it is doing total of 200 joule of mechanical work and then we have to comment on uh, uh, the four statements which one of these are correct what are our options a the reservoir at temperature t2 absorbs 200 joule of heat while the reservoir at temperature t3 loses 1200 joule of heat that's option a option b is reservoir at temperature t2 absorbs 1200 joule of heat while the reservoir at temperature t3 loses 200 joule of heat the option C is change in entropy of the reservoir uh, or temperature D2 will be 4 joule per Kelvin and the option 4 D option is change in entropy of reservoir at temperature T3 will be minus 1 joule per Kelvin. So if you want you can give it a try I will get into my solution right away. So let's see. Okay. So what are the main concepts involved here? So you know that entropy is a uh, state property and not a path property and therefore when we go in an entire cycle the change in entropy must be zero okay so first idea is integral dq by t for the entire process is zero and it's very easy to see from here that uh, what are the processes here so q1 is an isothermal process it's occurring at 400 kelvin and it's a reversible process so temperature is constant there's no temperature difference so this is an isothermal process and then from 400 kelvin to 300 kelvin there must be an adiabatic process because heat is not being exchanged anywhere else and therefore from 400 kelvin to 300 kelvin system must be going undergoing a reversible adiabatic process okay and again at 300 kelvin we have heat rejection at constant temperature so again an isothermal process and then uh, uh, again from 300 kelvin to 200 kelvin there must be an a reversible adiabatic process why because no heat is being exchanged again in going from 300 kelvin to 200 kelvin and once again at 200 kelvin heat is being exchanged at constant temperature so this is an isothermal process okay so uh, here we have a, a process uh, which has only isotherms and adiabats okay and uh, i know that when i get back to the initial configuration the uh, total integral dq by t in the cycle as a whole must be zero so that's the first idea that i'm going to use and of course for complete cyclic processes you know that since internal energy is also a state property so if you start from somewhere and get back to the same state the change in internal energy is also zero so recall that the question explicitly mentions that we have integer number of cycles completed so complete cycles have happened and therefore total heat absorbed by the system must be equal to total work done by the system so this is the other idea that i am going to use so let me just uh, use the condition that's given by equation one integral dq by t is zero so here if you see the the working fluid is absorbing q1 amount of heat at 400 kelvin so what's the entropy change of the working fluid here we can say q1 divided by 400 okay and here the uh, the working fluid is uh, rejecting q2 heat at 300 kelvin so what's the entropy change here that is minus q2 by 300 and here again the uh, the working fluid is rejecting q3 amount of heat at 200 kelvin so again minus q3 by 200 so right now i'm not worried whether q3 is positive or negative uh, we'll see whatever comes by the equation that we will accept okay mm -hmm. so according to the given arrows i'm just saying that qt is rejected here q3 is rejected here q1 is accepted okay and this is given as 1200 joule and total work done is given as 200 uh, there's 1200 joule and work done in the entire cycle is 200 joule right so uh, this is the so if i just rearrange this equation i just put value of q1 as 1200 and rearrange this equation what do i get so q2 by 300 and q3 by 200 that is equal to you will get uh, q1 by 400 that is equal to uh, 1200 by 400 which is 3 so this is uh, equation number 3 and then using the condition 2 so total heat absorbed should be equal to total work done 
in the entire cycle so uh, here the heat absorbed is q1 here heat rejected is q2 here heat rejected is q3 so q1 minus q2 minus q3 is equal to w and q1 is given as 1200 1200 minus q2 minus q3 is 200 and now you see equation number 4 and equation 3 the only unknowns are q2 and q3 okay q2 and q3 so if you solve them you get q2 as 1200 uh, joule and q3 as minus 200 joule let me add a joule sign here so okay so what does that give you uh, if you look at the options now so uh, look at the option b reservoir at t2 absorbs 1200 joule so this is uh, right okay uh, this q3 uh, t2 okay so q2 is 1200 joule and this is the heat being absorbed by the reservoir right so uh, working fluid is rejecting this much heat and reservoir is accepting this much of heat okay so reservoir at t2 absorbs 1200 joule this is right while the reservoir at T3 loses 200 joule of heat okay because Q3 is minus 200 joule that means working fluid is rejecting minus 200 joule which is equivalent to saying that working fluid accepts 200 joule so option B is correct okay so option B is correct now what about the change in entropy so delta S2 here uh, the heat rejected is Q2 and temperature is 300 so Q2 divided by 300 that is 1200 divided by 300 that is plus 4 joule per Kelvin so change in entropy of reservoir at temperature T2 will be 4 joule per Kelvin this is also correct and the third one uh, third statement or rather uh, last uh, option change in entropy of reservoir at T3 will be minus 1 joule per Kelvin so uh, Q3 is minus 200 and temperature is 200 so you divide the two and you get minus 1 joule per Kelvin so option D is also correct so that was my analysis of the problem hope you enjoyed the analysis if you enjoyed the analysis please do give a thumbs up to my video please uh, share this video as much as possible with your friends uh, through whatsapp telegram discord or whatever medium you use for networking with your fellow students and most importantly if you have not already subscribed to my channel please do subscribe to my channel right now because that's what keeps me motivated to do a new video every day and thanks a lot for watching this video and i'll see you in the next one and as always god bless you all thank you